Welcome back, everybody. It's Monday Night Variety Night, and we're trying something new, something old, something rebuilt from the ground up. We're talking about Duelist 2, as you can see over on the other screen. It's a game, probably my first favorite digital card game, is the way I'd put it. It, it was an incredible game, had a very unique art style, a very unique play pattern, and I'm anxious to see what the new overlords will say, the new devs are going to do. Let's get to it. I specifically left the tutorial unfinished, didn't even start it, so that we could do it together on stream. But we're going to learn how to play Duelist 2. Now, it's been a while since I played this game, so we'll see. So here is our general, Argeon High Main, Calibero 2.0. Here's our health. I'm double stating a lot of this stuff so I can also keep an eye on the overlay, see if I need to change something. This is a, it's a fun game, Forgo. It's, it's right now on Steam, open beta. It's free, well, free to play. Uh, I don't know what the economy looks like now. It's kind of loud. So you can see the mana's up here. Uh, it's similar to keys, but instead of an accrual rate and storage, the mana works more like Hearthstone. Hevo looking good. Hevo looks big. Hevo also got a big ass sword. So they do have a unique placement system. But anyway, so we play our minion. This got a buff from what I remember. This used to be a 3 2. It's been years. This is Duelist, Kratos. We're going through the tutorial, so you're just in time to learn with us. So you draw two cards a turn, as mentioned before. Well, I mentioned it on other streams which is unique compared to a lot of other games. You're too cute for battle. I will say I wish, just as general commentary, that they would leave these up until I click them off. Yeah, hand is down at the bottom, mana up top. A little chomp action. So we're going to trade golems here. As compared to other games, namely Rune Strike that I played in more recent history, the combat does trade. So it's not just the attacker has an advantage. I, I recall correctly, there are abilities that will impact that. But So it's, yes, plus one mana a turn, but you do not start at one. So if you noticed, I started at two and they started at three. Also, the deployment zone. So if you notice, the deployment zones are based on where your stuff is. Now, there are certain keywords that will allow you to place units in other locations, but oftentimes you need to play something like a chain, and that can be very relevant for positioning. So say this guy next turn moves back here. I could then pop a ranged guy back here, and it's way the hell away from the battle, and they are less likely to be able to get to it. You asked for it. Did I really, though? Get wrecked. So, obviously, the generals can also get involved, and that is very relevant. So, you WoW players out there that had played solo, there's a number of other games where you end up, you know, base checking with you. These are relevant things. We've drawn a spell. Does two damage to a minion. I'm trying to show the spell. Yes, I, I would love to if you would let me show it. All right. So hype, we could target other stuff. We're going to deal two damage to this golem here. Realistically, I should be going face, but the game is forcing me to do this, so we're going to do it. Yeah, we know our general can attack. They just punched me. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> about to summon the upgraded Daisy. So there is a pseudo like creepy faction, we'll say, that has some undead kind of thing. Tactical retreat. You're just advancing in the other direction. Counter spells do not exist, yes. So this is a uh asynchronous turn game. So we they're now explaining artifacts. So this will give my general, and you can play it anywhere because it only goes on the general. And I'll they'll presumably explain artifacts momentarily, but you can have up to three artifacts and they have durability. Each time that your general takes damage, your artifacts take damage. After the durability is gone, the artifact is destroyed. And some of them can have some pretty wild powers. As you can see, this one just plainly gives me plus one attack, which is fine and also very relevant depending on the strategy. So here's where they explain the replace mechanic. So one, you draw two every turn, but then once a turn, you can take a card and shuffle it back into your deck to get a different card. So this is the spell that we played earlier. So it's up to us to defeat him, but clearly we clear the blocker. I'm going to attack with our hero first so you can see how that works. Similar to Phobies, everything has two actions, essentially. I'm sure it'll get into it later on. We haven't actually covered that. There you go. How do you know something's move speed? Everything moves too. Everything moves too. So you have a move action, you have an attack action. And that's pretty much it. So spirit orbs are their version of packs. As you can see, there's there's gold, there's shards. We'll take a look at the store real quick. So this was something that existed in the old version of the game. You could buy packs. They had these bundles where you can buy unique emotes. So like this is Mechazor. Uh, there, there's a variety of different champions. That's what all of these are. And then apparently now they have different skins, which is pretty cool. Shards appear to be... Oh, and they have card skins as well. That's new. Actually, that might not be. I know they had the champion or the general skins, but I don't know if they had it. I feel like this existed, but not all of these, which is kind of cool. What faction has the goth ladies? That is the Abyssian host, and we'll we'll take a peek at those. So there are six factions. It's the Lionar, the Songhai. Oh, we'll do this. This is the Lionar. They're your Templar paladins kind of things. The Songhai are your ninja sort of faction. They have a base mechanic literally called Backstab. It does exactly what it is. Uh, the Vitruvian Host, I'm not really sure what they were supposed to be, but they're supposed to be the desert-based faction. The Abyssian Host is the pseudo-creepy crawlies. So you have Lilith Blight Chaser, who... Because this was... Mo this and Magmar were my main factions. Uh, Lilith is imp Focus, so they create a lot of tokens and swarm. Whereas Cassiva is focused on the creep mechanic. And creep is something where you can... It's Think about phobies where you play traps, but it's not a hidden trap. You know that it's there. And if you're there, you just take damage at the end of the turn. Uh, is this game? It's deck building. So it is a card game, but with a board. So imagine phobies if you showed up with a deck kind of thing. Uh, and then I forget with this. I remember this hero, but it was not one of the more popular ones. This is my other major faction, which is the Magmar. Uh, I forget what the hell their secondary thing is. Like I said, it was the Abyssian Host, and I think it's the Songhai Empire or the Vitruvian Empire. It might be the Magmar Immortals or something like that. I forget. Voth is your solo general, so you build up because his hero power actually gives him a permanent attack buff. Uh, Starhorn is a combo-based general, generally. I. Uh, Ragnora, I believe, summoned minions. Is Voth good? Oh, this guy, Voth the Immortal? Yes. So Voth the Immortal, his 
and I don't know if we can see it. We'll we'll go in, we'll circle back to it when I talk about it. But yes, Voth absolutely had a place. Originally, there was only one general per faction. Then they introduced the other ones. Uh, Thay, if I recall, was a burn base. This is the ice faction, the Vanar. Uh, Kara, I think, was wall based. If I recall correctly, and I don't remember what this one was. And then there is neutral stuff, but it's all dudes. Yep, this game is back. It is officially out in open beta. I'm playing the open beta through Steam right now. You could literally go download it. Uh, it's a different dev set. I play after the stream. We're going to mess around a little bit, just showing stuff off. So, like I said, there are funny emotes. That was their main way of communicating. Uh, so, if you, this game came out after Hearthstone, if you remember all the nonsense with Hearthstone emotes being just BM. I mean, you can still BM somebody, but it's a little funnier when it's like this. It's cute. It's a good game to play while baking. It's not asymmetric in the sense that you can put it down like phobies. You you have to like play the game. So you'd have to stop, play the game. There's, it's not like input your turn, pass turn, and then come back 20 minutes later. As far as I know, they didn't add that. Battle Bond plus Golem gets 16 attack. So Forgo, you've already discovered one of the original combos that pissed people off. I'm not joking. It was one of the more frustrating things, and you kind you'll learn that there are certain things. So, for example, and we'll see if I don't know if we can see the whole card collection. And I see. I guess we could do it in crafting. Uh, we got to defeat him in a practice game to unlock these. So each of these have different uh, different abilities, although they're not showing here. So I wonder if they removed that. So after a while, you basically learn what the common combos are for a given faction. So like Holy Immolation can absolutely end a game. The aforementioned combo with uh, the five drop, where is he? With Iron Cliff Guardian and Bond can absolutely end a game. At a Magmar, you want to see or worry about Mechantor War Beast. You want to worry about uh, certain Whirlwind cards out of Etruvian. The Songhai can just teleport across the map and annihilate you. Yeah, the pixel art was one of the things that drew me in initially. So we're gonna we're gonna jump in. There are challenges in this game as well. There are challenges in this game as well. Uh apparently we have to unlock all the stuff before we can even get into the seasonal ladder. Is there a control deck? Cassiva. If you're looking at Abyssian, Cassiva was the typical control deck. You can play control out of all the factions, or mid-range at least. Obviously, some of them are better or worse, but it depends because there's different types of control. So to elaborate on that momentarily, if you look at these factions or this faction, Lion Art. So where is it? This has provoke. It's basically what you'd think. It projects an area of influence around itself. And if you are adjacent to it in one of those areas, you cannot move. You cannot do anything but attack this. What's my name in this? Uh, RT Chomp GG. I used to play under a different name. I'm trying to make everything as consistent as I can. Um, so the reason I say there are different types of control is that you could play Lion R and then just play a ton of Provoke minions and like lock down the whole board. You could play Van R and play the war, or excuse me, the wall spells and minions and just fill up the board with walls so your, it minimizes your opponent's movement. You could also play. You could also play uh, Songhai with Burn. You could play Vitruvian by producing tokens, essentially, and just you know control the board that way. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of different ways that you can play control. Um, a lot of it is minion fighting, although there are spell heavy decks. There are the frustrating things that were in this game previously were out-of-hand combos that were problematic. I appreciate that. I'm glad you're enjoying the, the content. But I'm curious because there was rebalancing done on a lot of the cards. I can already, as I was mentioning it, some of them, and it's been years since I played, so I'm going to have to remember. But there's been rebalancing on some of the cards. They originally started with draw two, and then through the life of the game switched to draw one. They kept the cycle mechanic. Now, for anybody who's played card games, that is a massive change. 
the new devs have elected to roll back to the draw two. So I'm very curious what they're going to do. And I'm curious if they got rid of, for example, the hero powers, because one of the things that was introduced when the draw two went away was the hero powers to kind of fill the gap of, well, I'm not drawing as many cards. I literally have nothing to do. Here are hero powers to help fill that void. And it introduced new strategies. Like I said, uh, the one Abyssian host champion would spawn two one ones. The other one could ping something anywhere on the map. And if it died, it created a trap, essentially, for my Phobie players on that space. Draw 2 seems like it make aggro super consistent. Consistency was one of the reasons that the old devs had said that they got rid of Draw 2. And it, in the sense that I believe, although I don't remember if they said this, that it basically stifled future card design because it's like, okay, well, how many three cost things that do X, Y, and Z can we have? And after a while, your whole deck is just so consistent that you will always do the same thing, um, which Obi's players will probably like the sound of that. I like the sound of that. A lot of card game players don't, but we'll see. Let's jump into a practice game. We're going to play the Lion Art Kingdoms. I don't know if I can choose. Yeah, I think we just go through. Oh, we get do get to choose. We're going to go with Magmar. Oh my god, Chad, I missed this. I miss. I love the announcer. He's just like, Magmar. Like this super deep commanding voice. I love it. I love it. So you do get a mulligan. You do get a mulligan. So we have a new card here that we haven't seen. This is Martyrdom. Destroy a minion, heal its owner's general for the amount of the health healed. So it's sword to plowshares for my magic players. Komodo Scavenger. This gains health equal to the cost of the next artifact you equip. So this is something that wasn't brought up in the tutorial. There are mana tiles. So as compared to Hearthstone, where you get a coin or other whatever the hell Runeterra does or other or Phobies where you get an extra key, these are positioned around the map as such. If you get on one of those, you get a temporary mana. So I will be able to get four mana this turn, hypothetically, which I'm clearly going to do. So this guy has zeal, which is a keyword that as long as he's next to my hero, my general, he gets an attack buff. But because of this extra mana, I can now off this thing, which is relevant, A, because I don't want it to grow, and B, it prevents them from easily taking this and then ramping the next turn. Collecting and denying these resources is a core component in this game. Me when Jammy Fish is the only phobia that affects keys. So this has airdrop. As mentioned a few minutes ago, you can only... Oh, baby, this is going to be dangerous. Uh, you can only play stuff with... Well, this guy has airdrop, so it's not a good example. But you can only play it within a certain e sphere of influence. However, this can be played anywhere. And it has celerity, so it can be activated twice. You'll see what that means. Uh, we probably... We're at three... That'll be five. Needs six. Fortunate. So I think what we're gonna do is lock this guy in place. And they can't, because they're only gonna be able to move to here. They won't be able to attack this with their uh their guy right now. Actually, probably replace first. Ooh, this is pretty cool. Um, yeah, what the hell? We'll play this guy just because we can. So I'm not going to attack. They're going to be forced to. This retains the health buff on here. And I'm probably going to have to martyrdom this guy anyway. We'll just martyrdom to get this guy off the board. Yeah, they only have four. I don't know what the starter decks have, so I I just have to be a little cognizant of don't get blown out by something. We should have replaced first, but that's fine. That's the big joke in this game is never replace first, because you should, 
but I know I always forget. Another Earthwalker came down. Get our Bracers online. Um, we have six mana, so we're just going to play a body. So this will 100% trap them. Even when that dies, they will literally be unable to move. So this thing has opening Gambit, which is Warcry. It's uh, when played, enters the battlefield, whatever. Give it minion plus two, minus two. So that's why we we're able to kill that guy. As you can see, I lost a durability up here because I took damage. They're down to nine, though, so, like, it doesn't matter. Ooh, Tempest. I think this used to do face damage. I think Tempest used to do face damage. GG, Voth. Well played. So I am very curious to see whether they left the hero powers in tap because otherwise these uh, different generals are just simply skins of each other. Action unlocked. Ooh. There we go. We got Voth the Immortal, Starhorn the Seeker, and Ragnora the Relentless. Pizza does face damage to me. Was that a faction-specific orb? I'm not sure. They might have given you that. Uh, we can take a look. We have two spirit orbs. No, these are general orbs. We'll, we'll show everybody the orb animation. So we got three commons and two rares. I don't know what the numbers are. Oh, Firebase, Fireblaze Obelisk. It brings back memory. So does Spirit Harvester. I mean, Ethereal Obelisk is important as well. Yeah, the art is awesome. Like, it's actually awesome. Believe it or not, when this... If you look at my website, <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever does, but I have articles about this game from when the first one... Like, we're talking six years ago or whatever it was. Uh, so this is our first pack. We do get cards that has Rebirth, which is a cool mechanic. It's basically Resurrect. But all of... Instead of having to stand on the bones... Like in phobies. In this... Ooh, we get an epic, chat. Instead of having to stand on the bones like we do in phobies, it pops a little egg. All right, so we got a rare. Storm Aratha. I don't remember this being relevant. When this attacks an enemy, deal three damage to enemies nearby that enemy. It's okay. It has flying, though, which means it can move anywhere as compared to the normal limited two-space movement. Let's see what the commons are. Aspect of the Fox. This is Vanar. This is neutral, ghost links, teleport an enemy minion to a random space. I hate that they kept random stuff, but it is what it is. And this is the Komodo scavenger we saw a minute ago. Here we go. White Widow. When you replace a card, deal two damage split randomly among enemies. This is actually pretty cool. I did like these replace base decks. I don't think they were that good as in... You could absolutely hit S tier, which is their... Their version of some of all fears or legend rank or tier zero, whatever. But I don't remember it being because it's not. It was heavily reliant on finding like these cards, getting them into play at an appropriate time and then having enough time to do it. Yeah, they were definitely annoying because it always this is there were a number of cards such as this that and maybe the game has changed because, again, they've revamped things, they've rebalanced things. There were a number of cards that felt as though, hey, I never draw them when I play that deck, but my opponent hits it on curve 100% of the time because you never see the games where they don't. Ooh, we have quests. Oh, yeah, we have to win a practice game. So I'm not going to lie, chat. I'm not, again, I'm not affiliated with them. I'm probably going to put game money into the game. I want to see what the, uh, how much is... Or the shards. I'm not going to do it tonight, but... Okay, so here are the prices. Like, I'll probably put 50 or 100 bucks into the game to just jumpstart my collection. So that I can get back to playing the things that I miss. As long as... What I'm going to do is I'll play, and as long as there are people on ladder, I'll probably put money into the game. Obviously, we don't know. We'll see. Really want to mess... Yeah, if you... Whoever was asking about the... Uh, the Abyssian stuff, 
Lilith is the one that you wanted, but I don't know if they have the hero powers anymore. So Cassiva used to have a hero power that said, pay two mana or whatever it was, deal one damage to something. If it dies, uh, put creep on, and it would be like little spikes on the tile. If anything ended the turn on that tile, it took one damage. Lilith would spawn two 1-1 one -one imps in random spaces around her. I forget what Maeve's was. I feel like it was a demonic whip on... But no, that would have been... That wasn't it. I don't remember. But I don't know if they even have it, because as you can see, these are blank. And they used to have the abilities underneath them, we'll say. I love how everyone's being recommended Abyssian for everything. Honestly, I love playing Abyssian and Magmar the most. Uh, I probably played Songhai and Vanar the least, Vitruvian the, the next, and then Lionar was between the rest of them. Remember Lilith being an absolute pain when you just started out rank because you barely had any good cards? All of them have backbreaking things. I think Vitruvian was probably, and maybe Vanar were probably the hardest. They were the most difficult to try and combat, or, or excuse me, they were the most difficult to try and build early on because it felt like they needed a lot of rares and legendaries to really get the wheels greased. Whereas the other factions, even if they weren't optimal or playing their best strategy, you could play a bad version of them and still do okay. Magmar was always a coin flip to play against. It depended on the version. Uh, if you played against, like, Starhorn, they were, because it was just such a stupid deck, it was fun. So for anybody who's not familiar, Both, the one whose uh, mug we're looking at here, would get plus one attack. But Starhorn's hero power was both players draw a card, which sounds weird, right? But there were a bunch of, uh, of Magmar cards that punished you if you drew cards. So basically, you had a permanent Howling Mine, and then you played a bunch of other cards that were like both players draw a bunch of cards, and then you burn your opponent out. And it's super frustrating, as you can imagine, because there's some times where you just get your ass kicked. But there, it's funny. There's a lot of fun stuff in this game. Magmar. I, I'm telling you, chat, I love it. Okay, so we got some new cards. Uh, new cards, at least in general. Uh, I guess we'll go with this, because the natural selection is a fun single target removal. Just so you can see the emotes. So, this is sort of risky because unless they rebalance it, they do have Demonic Whip, which could just off this. When did the Pokemon Magmar come out? In G1. Ooh, Gloom Chaser, a classic. So, as you can see, Abyssian Host already starting out with this. Uh, this also makes Natural Selection real bad, as you'd imagine. We'll play a Veteran Silithar. We'll buff this guy, and we'll get rid of the token. We have to remove the token, or otherwise we're going to be forced to hit it. And I definitely don't want the Phalanxer. Dampening Wave is kind of weird. So there are things that interact. You have attacks, and then you have counterattacks, or exactly what they sound like. Uh, and it's a little weird utilizing things that interact with counterattacks. I don't know. Oh, Plasma Storm. Your classic not Wrath of God. Um... I'm actually going to save this. So we'll save ourselves two health here. I love how the, the AI emotes. So I'm moving this mostly to demonstrate this. Normally, I could only play... Well, I still can only play around things. You can see it's highlighted by these tiles. But this means that I can position this scorpion all the way the hell back here. Ooh, a Piercing Mantis. So Frenzy is the AoE ability. Think of it like Beauty's Attack for my Phobies players, stuff like that. Ooh, what is this? Oh, yeah, Shadow Watcher. Death Watch is... 
well, it's what it sounds like. It triggers when something dies. Get scorpioned. GG. We got him, chat. Victory. Victory. We'll run through and unlock the other factions. We got our Abyssian host. Like, look at this artwork, too. It's not just the pixel art, which I think is awesome, but look at... The, I mean, it's kind of covering it here, but, like, the artwork on this is super cool. Like, all of it is super awesome. Although, one thing that was always interesting about this is, like, there are a number of characters that are part mechanical. As you can see, she's missing an arm here. The Vitruvian host is like that, and I think there's a number of... Uh, I think it's the Vitruvian host. It might be the Vitruvian Empire. I think there's Songhai and, and Lionar characters that are like that as well. Alright, so we'll play the Vitruvian. We will unlock... Or try to unlock Songhai. No, we'll go Vitruvian. So... So it's the Vitruvian Imperium. All right, so this is demonic. Oh, it's demonic lore, but it's a whip. Uh, you can damage something. Obviously, if it kills it, it kills it. Otherwise, you can teleport it to a space. That could be you bring it in to kill it. You could fling it to the other side of the board. You could move it somewhere to body block, whatever. Void Pulse is not great. It's direct damage and heals you, but I don't care. What is this guy? I don't remember. Dying Wish. Oh, yeah. He buffs things when he dies. So I'm going to play this here. No, I'm not. So I don't want to play it here because if I accidentally take this mana orb, it does nothing for me this turn. So I'm going to play it here. So the generals not have powers then, they're just skins. As of right now, that appears to be the case. I want to see once we unlock them all if maybe it unlocks something else. The way the game originally started is that is how it worked. You did not have hero powers. But they added it in, so I'm curious as to how this works. All right, so we're going to play Doofus here. This is not necessarily ideal, but we'll trap him because we can. So they could just punch our guys. But we now have a Shadow Watcher that we're going to get online, so I'm pretty excited about that. That guy's going to get huge. Assuming they don't wipe our board this turn. You got a Legendary? What Legendary, Forgo? Alright, so this Wind Strike has Flying. Does what it sounds like. You can move anywhere on the board like we were talking about before. And it's Dying Wish. Also self-explanatory. Equip a Staff of Ykir to your General. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell us what that is. If I recall correctly, it's plus two attack. So we have, this is going to cost three, we can go to five. So we're just going to kill this thing so that this way this grows. Like, we're sending everything in this turn. We're all in, chat. And plus, it removes the artifact, because we're going to destroy it before they actually get an opportunity to truly use it. Yeah, we'll only have five resources next turn, which is unfortunate, because we can't play both the Wraithling Swarm and the Ritual Banishing in the event that we need to, but that's okay. Spectral Revenant, that is actually huge, Forgo. Spectral Revenant is a backbone for Abyssian. So I guess diagonal, so I guess movement isn't diagonal as far as surrounding people in. Correct. You only have to go in the cardinal directions and because you have to move through those spaces, like either left, right, and up or up and whatever it happens to be. You can't just run fast. Although it does obviously count for joining, which is a little 
I guess it makes sense, but it's a little weird. But we're just trapping this guy. He's never getting out of here. One thing that I do appreciate about this game is especially a lot of games where you can see your opponent's cards and like they focus on card backs, they make you count the cards they have in hand. It just tells you here, which is nice. It, it's just makes life easier. Ooh, so we get our artifact. When your general deals damage, summon a Wraithling in a random space. Not like it matters. This guy is literally dead this turn. But we're going to do it because we can. We're just playing things because I want to. GG got him. So notably, uh, it, you may have only caught at the end there. It doesn't matter how much damage you do to your opponent in with respect to the artifacts. It's if they take damage, whether it's one or a hundred. I mean, a hundred would kill them probably, but. As long as you deal damage, they lose a durability. But it has to be individual instances of damage. One damage, ten damage, one durability. All right, so we got some gold, so we get more packs. Like, these guys look sweet, right? I forget what his ability was. I forget what hers was, too. This guy just looks like he has the pog face, where he's completely shocked. There is a backstory as to why they look like this, though. And it was... I don't remember if it's in the missions or if it was in a separate story thing. But they did explain there's, like, a rite of passage in the Vitruvian Imperium to become whatever these are. And... They, like, you don't start like this. Ooh, we gotta win a season ladder game. We've un... Wait, did we get everything? We didn't get all of them, did we? No, we still got two. So we'll unlock the other factions and then we'll move on. Go Songhai next. Songhai versus Vitruvian. So there is a Golem deck. There are tribal decks. So you, it, there's something we haven't seen yet, but it's called Mechazor, and I, I believe they rebalanced it. Uh, they changed some of it. Mechazor literally is, you play the parts of Mechazor, and then it builds a card into your hand that you can then, well, I think it actually gets deployed to the board immediately. Each of them have a certain percentage that they add to the completion of building Mechazor. So you can build a Mechazor deck, you can build a Golem deck. Uh, there are Dervish decks for the Vitruvian Imperium because that is their, you know, one of their mechanics. Uh, we'll just stick with this, I don't care. So this has Backstab, one of the more frustrating mechanics. When attacking from behind, it deals extra damage and cannot be counterattacked. What's Mechazor? If you know, you know. Let's put it this way. If you don't know, you can't afford it. <laughs> I should have actually mulliganed one of these because I wasn't planning on doing it. Um... We could play both. We're just going to do this. We'll hold on to the body. Oh, I keep forgetting they're, they're four twos now. Ah, so we get an, an obelisk. We also got an orb weaver. So I'll play the obelisk so you can see how it works. What are the stats of Mechazor? I believe it was an 8-8 ranged flying frenzy. Or not frenzy, whatever. Yeah, frenzy. The AoE ability. Wait, it was airdrop, flying, frenzy, ranged, something else, maybe? And I think it was an 8-8. Eight, eight. It was really good. Uh, do we want to do that? It's five. Yeah, this is fine. Actually replace this. Ooh. We'll send that guy to the other end of creation.
Yeah, Mechazor was always, well, not always, but it was primarily a meme deck. And it was kind of like my first tribal deck. And it was one of the first things that beginners could build that, you know, hypothetically could hold the fort. It eventually got buffed and got much better. But in the meantime, so what you're seeing down here is a wind dervish. There are different kinds of dervishes, but every turn, the gateway ability here is at the start of your turn, summon a wind dervish with rush. Rush is, well, you can kind of guess. It can move and attack this turn. And then it goes away at end of turn. There are things that can make them permanent. There are things that interact with them. But as you can imagine, there are fun strategies where you build a city with all of this stuff. We're actually going to do this to trap them in. These used to be two twos, I think. So he's not really trapped. They can just kill stuff with the assassin. Yeah, the gateway stuff spawns things each turn. So as you can see, now I get two. And notably, they're just dead. So this is the Starfire Scarab Blast. That's the ability I forgot on Mechazor. I'm pretty sure Mechazor had Blast. So it's a line attack. Think Beauty's line attack. It does this on every attack. So like getting this on one of these end columns can be very good because then it's just like, all right, well, I'll just slide up and down and annihilate whatever's in the path. GG, got him. Hashtag got him. Victory. Victory. Chad, I really miss this game. I miss this game a lot. So I believe he had a move as his ability. Like he can move something two spaces or something like that. She would summon 1-1 one, one ranged minions. And I forget what this one's ability was. I want to say it was something with artifacts, but I could be wrong. I don't really remember. Uh, Vanar. Vanar. Here we go. Ooh, four wins Magus. Wind strike. Saber spine. I think this used to give plus health too, which was kind of silly, but this is generally a very combo heavy faction, not in the sense that it is, oh, I'm playing a combo deck that kills you in one turn, although it can do that. Uh, it has a lot of card draw, it has a lot of burn, it has a lot of direct damage, and a lot of it is based off of, well, if you did this, then do this sort of thing. The card draw is balanced by, you draw it at the end of turn, in a lot of cases, such as you can see on Twin Strike here, so that that way you can't just spam spells with this guy that have a bunch of draws on them and then immediately refill in the same turn to keep going. Um, We'll keep that guy. We just need to get some lower drops so we can actually contest the board. Uh, that. So this has flying and backstab, which seems a lot better than I remember it actually being. A putrid dread flare. It is a flare of dread. Ooh, we got a gore horn. That's pretty cool. It gets bigger after it backstabs. The Arctic Displacer seems as strong as a 10-4. So, the one general rule of thumb for this game is low health is very, very bad. Because you take that counterattack damage, so even if you punch the general, you're getting hit back. 
and there's a lot of ways for things to get very bad for you or go very bad for you. Ooh, Blood Tier Alchemist. They give you a lot of stuff that is valuable early on. So we're going to play this. This is Inner Focus. It activates an allied minion with three or less attack. Or horn. We get a free ping from this because we played a spell. Now we're going to backstab. So remember how you take... I was just saying how you take counterattack damage. You don't when you counterattack. Ouchdown population, that guy. Ooh, Miss Dragon Seal. So we can teleport people now. There's a lot of teleporting in this faction. Probably shouldn't have hit that. We should probably just go face, but whatever. Young Flame Wing. So we drew some burn. We drew another Gorehorn. I wonder if they give you a place out of Gorehorns. <laughs> can we just kill them this turn? We can just kill them this turn. So we could either ping them with the Blood Tier Alchemist, or we could just hit him for three and then an extra ping here. Songhai was often one of the more frustrating factions to play against for me. It just constantly felt like they kill you out of hand, and there was nothing you could do about it. <laughs> 